Today we are joined by Grace Marie Turner, President of the Galen Institute. Earlier today, Grace Marie testified before Congress on the administration's actions in implementing the Affordable Care Act. Grace Marie, thank you for taking the time to speak with a Bridge to Better Health Care campaign. Thank you so much. A pleasure to be with you. I know the Galen Institute joined several state legislators in filing an amicus brief in support of the plaintiff in the King v. Burwell case now before the Supreme Court. Why do you believe it's important for the court to rule against the government in this case? We filed an amicus brief because it is very clear to us that the administration is writing regulations to implement the health law that are contrary to the actual language in the statute. The King v. Burwell case that the Supreme Court will decide in June is one example, but I cited in my testimony 31 examples where the administration has made changes to the law contrary to the statute, and this hearing today was an overview of that. With regard to the King v. Burwell case, there's been a lot written in the media about those 6 to 7 million people in 37 states who could lose tax subsidies if the court finds that those subsidies were not intended for people getting their health insurance through a federal exchange. But there has been little in the press about any benefits. Could you talk a little bit about those benefits if the court strikes down those tax subsidies? An important study was released this week by the American Action Forum, President of Doug Holtz Aiken, former director of the Congressional Budget Office, who showed that millions of people will benefit if the Supreme Court upholds the law and strikes down the illegal IRS activity. 11 million people will be freed from the individual mandate. They will be, they will be freed from an estimated $1,200 a year in penalties. More than 3 million people will be find that they can have their hours restored that are being cut as a result of the employer mandate provision. There will be a quarter of a million new jobs created, and the average worker will find that his work, his wages in those 37 states operating under the federal exchanges, the average worker will see $1,000 a year more in income because the mandates, the penalties, the requirements of this law will be lifted in those 37 states. Thank you. In the run-up to the Supreme Court's June decision in this case, how important is it for Republicans in Congress to communicate that they're ready to act if the court fund, finds that those tax subsidies were improperly given by the IRS? The Congress absolutely understands the importance of taking action, not only to send a message to the Supreme Court that it has the space to make this decision based upon the rule of law, but also because they don't want to see six to seven million people harmed again because of this law. Many of the people had their coverage canceled because it didn't comply with the ACA, and now they could lose it again because the administration wrote an illegal rule that allows subsidies to go to people who were not eligible for them. Congress wants to fix it, but it wants to fix it in a way that gives people more choices, that returns regulatory control over health insurance to the state, and that allows people to get out from under all of these destructive rules and mandates and regulations that are making health insurance more expensive, causing people to lose their policies, and, and having a huge disruption on the workforce. Grace Marie, in your opinion, are there, is there anything else a Republican should do in the aftermath of a King victory? They need to, to not only explain to the American people that they have better ideas for how to reform health reforms. Not that we're saying we don't need health reform. We do. But Obamacare is not it. And this hearing today was really evidence that Congress has a responsibility to do oversight. Tens of billions of dollars, taxpayer dollars, are being spent illegally in a number of ways because the administration has rewritten the law to suit its political advantages. And this is not the way our constitutional system of government works. If the law is going to be changed, Congress has to do it. 
Today, Congressman Roscom, the chairman of the House Ways and Means Oversight Committee, said that he is going to be pushing for a super inspector general to oversee what is happening with this money, where is it going, is the law being properly implemented, are taxpayer dollars being, um, being monitored. So it's a watchdog for Obamacare, including the provision that allows subsidies to go to members of Congress totally contrary to the law to support their health insurance when the law does not provide for that, those provisions. So Congress has to do oversight, not just of the law, but of itself, and this, these illegal subsidies that are happening in so many different ways. How do you see some of these uh, actions uh, post King victory impacting the uh, repeal of Obamacare further down the road? The um, administration has, has um, resisted any effort to really re to revisit this law, but there will, I believe, they're not going to have a choice. If they want to legally restore subsidies to the six and seven million people who would lose them if King prevails, the administration is going to have to come to the table to negotiate with Congress, and some political watchers believe that there may be enough Democrats in those 37 states operating under a federal exchange to even provide enough votes to override a presidential veto. Congress has to propose a reasonable solution. I don't believe they can do a full replace on the platform of a post-King legislative solution, but they can move us down the road toward really starting to give people what they want. Again, more state control over health insurance regulations, more choices, getting out rid of all of the Obamacare rules and mandates so people are making their own choices about the kind of health insurance coverage they want. Thank you. Uh, finally, the Galen Institute has tracked all the administration's changes to the law so far. What do you believe is the most significant change, and can we expect more even if Burwell is victorious? I think that this hearing today is putting the administration on notice that Congress is going to continue to watch every change they make, and the most egregious ones are going to go back to the courts. We cannot litigate every single one of these 37 illegal changes, 31 illegal changes. But we can put them on notice that this is enough. Stop, stop rewriting the law. Follow the law. If you need to change it, you've got to go back to Congress to get those changes. And the King v. Burwell suit could very well be an example of that, where the president has said, and the administration acknowledges, they have no legal authority to fix this, if the Supreme Court votes with King, uh, decides in favor of King, they have to go to Congress. That could be the beginning of a new process, hopefully a bipartisan process, to get to real change and to move us back on the right path and help us all. Thank you so much for your time today, Grace Marie. We enjoyed getting the opportunity to speak with you about these important issues and look forward to the weeks ahead as this issue continues to unfold.